Welcome to Beneath the Surface presented by Rockwell, the show which travels alongside the CellGP race circuit to explore each venue and bring you the latest solutions and innovations from iconic cities all over the world. This episode we're in the Golden City with the greenest of reputations, San Francisco. Coming up, we learn how San Francisco Bay is innovating to protect itself in the face of climate change. We visit Oracle Park to see an award-winning sustainability project in action. And if you fancy winning some new team gear for CellGP Season 3, stay tuned. CellGP returns to the west coast of the USA to race in the Bay of San Francisco, but this time, champions will be crowned, with one team taking home the $1 million jackpot. Now, everyone knows the world-famous parts of San Francisco. The Golden Gate Bridge, Alcatraz, and the hills that sweep around the city. But when you go beneath the surface, you'll find there's a lot more to the Golden City than meets the eye. Here's everything you probably don't know about San Francisco in 60 seconds. If you're like me, your first question is probably, where can I get the perfect breakfast. Well, San Francisco is known for its amazing food scene, but if you want to kickstart the day Californian style, you should head to the Mission District where you can get some authentic Mexican food like this gigantic breakfast burrito. If you fancy a hike within city limits with epic views, Mount Davidson is the place to be. It has an elevation of nearly a thousand feet and if the walk up here doesn't take your breath away, the view certainly will. Now, if you're searching for a bit of tranquility in the city, Golden Gate Park is over a thousand acres in size. That's bigger than Central Park in New York City. And it's home to the California Academy of Sciences and the Japanese Tea Garden. And finally, the wave organ is an ocean-activated acoustic structure just across from the Golden Gate Bridge. It features 25 of these ocean pipes and the melody is created by the flow of water in and out. That was San Francisco in 60 seconds. Hey guys, that's Christian here. If you want to have the chance to win some new team gear for season three, count the small boats in the, in the corner of the screen and then uh, let us know how many you find in the, in the comment section. San Francisco has rightfully earned its reputation as one of the world's most iconic cities. This is a place that embodies innovation and has sustainability at its core. But even a major city like this faces its own unique challenges. And we're going to connect to some San Francisco natives to find out how they're redefining resilience through technology to better protect the Bay Area against the impacts of climate change. First up, we're off to meet Rory from San Francisco Travel to find out why this place is one of the best cities in the world to live in. Hello, how are you? I'm good, nice to meet you. Likewise, welcome to San Francisco. Thank you very much. Pleasure to have you here. Awesome, yeah. what a place. Gorgeous, isn't it? Salesforce Park. Awesome, Gorgeous, should we uh, take a seat? Let's do it. So Rory, you're a San Francisco native. Uh, it's one of the world's most iconic cities, but what, in your opinion, makes it so amazing? San Francisco is an incredible city for so many reasons. The diversity in cuisine, the diversity in topography, our hills, our landmarks. It's internationally recognized for so many reasons, and everybody thinks of San Francisco as this massive, you know, metropolis sprawling like New York or Chicago. It's really not. So it's seven by seven square miles, it's very intimate. And what's also cool is San Francisco is the gateway to Northern California. So you have Yosemite, you have Napa Valley, Sonoma, the vineyards, so San Francisco has it all. As you look in San Francisco, it's really the tech center of the United States and arguably the world. Any big tech company has a footprint here and or started here in San Francisco. So it's really kind of this melting pot of collaboration, innovation, we are a national leader in environmental policies, as well as finding innovative solutions to address climate crisis. Mayor London Breed implemented a 2021 climate action plan for San Francisco to become carbon net zero by 2040. We have the first of its kind citywide composting program. The city collects more than 500 tons per day in our green compostable trash cans. And that's really started in San Francisco and hailed widely um, from cities around the world. We teach our learnings and share everything abroad. So everybody looks to San Francisco to see what's next. Even city infrastructure, a lot of it originates here and we're proud of that fact. 
The world may look towards this region for inspiration, but how do policymakers, agencies and city planners decide on how best to protect the bay and its citizens? Well, they rely on data, modelling and scientific advisors, like those at the San Francisco Estuary Institute. Warner, thanks for joining us. Maybe you can tell us a bit more about the San Francisco Estuary Institute. Well, the fundamental role of the Institute is to provide independent objective science to local government and regional government entities that are dealing with landscape scale environmental issues. Everything from water quality in San Francisco Bay to restoration of the wetlands. If you're thinking about the San Francisco Bay Area, you really need to think about 8 million people essentially in a bathtub and the water's rising. So we have the normal issues that we're concerned about around climate change from drought and wildfires and extreme heat. But for this unique region, we really face a, a triple threat of rising seas, rising groundwater, and lowland flooding from more extreme and more frequent storms. And for the Bay Area, our entire urban infrastructure, our airports, our highways, our railroads, our water treatment plants are all down at that very low-lying area. The shoreline assets at risk are about $150 billion of assets at risk. Two-thirds of those assets, $100 billion, are located within San Francisco Bay. I think the good news is the Bay Area is a highly educated, highly environmentally sensitive community. We have world-class research institutions. We have very progressive business leaders. We have a very strong alignment between our local city and, and, and state officials. So there's an enormous commitment to uh, protecting the, the health of the, the San Francisco Bay. 20 years ago, we looked at what we needed to do to protect the bay, and we concluded that we needed to restore about 100,000 acres of wetlands at the edge of the bay. Those wetlands both filter the pollutants that wash down off of our urban areas into the bay, and they provide a buffer from storm surges and, and sea level rise. It's probably the cheapest, most effective, science-based, nature-based solution that we have to address climate change in, in this area. The real frontier area that where we need to make the most bold change going forward is probably the areas of finance and governance, providing incentives so that cities, counties, and regional agencies work collaboratively to solve land use problems across the entire uh, 450 miles of shoreline of, of San Francisco Bay. So we really have, I would say, a, a 10, 15 year max, but probably 10 year period in which we really need to, to step it up and dramatically accelerate the decisions we're making. For San Francisco, we're almost sort of ground zero for, for climate change and, and sea level rise. And I do believe that we can be a national, if not international model for how an urban region at the edge of the sea tackles adapting to climate change. I want my grandson, when he's my age, to look back and say, well, you know, Grandpa did everything he could to make a better world for, for me. And I think that there's uh, um, hundreds of people in the Bay Area that are doing that. And if Warner and his grandson take in a game at Oracle Park anytime soon, they'll discover just what the San Francisco Giants are doing to preserve water supplies through sustainable agriculture. And here we are, the world famous Oracle Park, home to the San Francisco Giants. And underneath this massive scoreboard, is a 4,000 foot urban farm featuring avocado, thyme, tomatoes, limes, olives. It's endless. And how it works is this. It's a hydroponic growing solution. So underneath this wood chip covering are blocks of growed and stone wool. And that significantly reduces water waste. So for example, a kilogram of tomatoes grown in a method like this with Grodan might take four litres of water. But a kilogram of tomatoes grown in a more traditional soil-based method might take 60. So it's a super innovative solution and it's right in the heart of one of the most famous stadiums in America. School children also attend the culinary education program here to learn about sustainable agriculture. The Giants have also won the Green Glove Award on 12 occasions. That's a prize awarded by Major League Baseball to the team with the highest recycling rate that diverts its waste away from landfills, making this team one of the greenest in the world. Sports is synonymous with San Francisco for a lot of reasons. With the San Francisco Giants, the Golden State Warriors, and the San Francisco 49ers, those are three of the most iconic sports brands in the United States and very well known across the world. Um, and throughout 2010 through 2020, we were named uh, Sports City of the Decade by a Sports Business Journal. So that's something to really hang your hat on. We were really uh, the place to be for sports fans. San Francisco is also synonymous with sailing. So why is this city the perfect partner for SailGP? 
it's international. We have the infrastructure to be able to host it. It's the natural kind of amphitheater that San Francisco has between the Golden Gate Bridge and Alcatraz that lends itself so well to sailing competitions. It just creates this, this natural beauty that you can't find in very many other places. Nowhere is better suited in the United States to kind of conduct international, technologically innovative and sustainable sporting event um, like San Francisco can. Everyone knows that SailGP is all about blistering speed and rapid fire reaction times. So we've set up these blaze pods in the team base to see if our sailors are as fast as an F50 or as slow as a schooner. The game is simple, hit the pods as many times in 30 seconds and the sailor with the most wins. This is round 6 of the Rock Challenge and it's played by our grinding twins Lars Peter and Hans Christian Rosendahl. Lars Peter was leading 3-2 into the final round but can't be in San Francisco so he's represented by wing trimmer Tom Johnson. No pressure Tom. Place your bets. 3, 2, 1, go. And that's it, Tom Johnson is not happy. He's walked off and he's kicked the camera over in the process. Hans Christian's won this round and tied the scores at the end of this season at three all against his twin brother, Lars Peter. I've been battling uh, against LP uh, all year. He's a hard competitor, but it was good. We had TJ, which is uh, just the biggest competitor and uh, he gave me a tough time. It feels good to win the last challenge. Well, that's all from beneath the surface San Francisco. A big thank you to San Francisco Travel Association for making us feel so welcome in the Golden City. Now, don't forget to watch the grand finale of SailGP Season 2 this weekend. You can go to sailgp.com forward slash watch to find out how to check out the action in your market. You can watch Denmark's SailGP team racing against the best sailors in the world in front of the iconic Golden Gate Bridge. And you can also follow that $1 million showdown between Japan, the USA, and the reigning champs, Australia. Don't miss it.